okay so uh, so uh, thanks abhishek um, so so i'll just uh, so from lecture uh, from previous lecture i'll just recap a few things uh, uh, just uh, something that we may need and uh, and then i will proceed to this lecture so uh, just uh, uh, to just remind everyone where we had stopped uh, remember that last time uh, last class we had stopped in this uh, uh, lindblad master equation and uh, and uh, it it had a hermitian piece and it had these non hermitian pieces okay um and then uh, and then from here uh, you can basically calculate pn which is nothing but n rho n okay so you can calculate equation for populations okay and we got some equations for populations um okay so now uh, now uh, if you want the steady state you can just put the left hand side to zero and you will get some uh, equation that you can basically solve by uh, uh, solve recursively okay um so so finally uh, uh, meaning you can write p1 in terms of p0 p2 in terms of p1 and p0 and so on and and finally uh, i'll not go into details it's all written in the notes finally you will get the equation in the steady state for populations okay so this is just by just by using the lindblad master equation and calculating the populations okay so this is what you this, this is what you will get so notice that this agrees with uh, the pn derived from this equilibrium uh, density matrix okay so so basically we can say that the system acquires the bath uh, temperature okay so uh, so this is just uh, uh, exact solution for pn from the lindblad master equation now notice that uh, detailed balance condition is basically given below okay so this is the detailed balance condition okay and uh, and uh, our steady state solution uh basically satisfies the detail balance condition so explicitly you can check that the steady state solution that you you get from uh, lindblad master equation satisfies the detail balance uh, condition e equation okay so um, uh, so now uh, uh, let us uh, just say a few things about expectation values so this is something that i already discussed yesterday say i want some expectation value of some photon field okay then uh, then basically i do trace of a rho dot and this rho dot i basically substitute uh, i substitute this equation here okay i substitute uh, this equation um, i just want to make one comment uh, uh, notice that i said these two are non hermitian pieces okay so the non hermitian pieces doesn't necessarily mean that it is only dissipative in nature in fact in fact this uh, this non hermitian piece is acting actually acting like a drive okay it's acting like a thermal drive so 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 when you just see lindblad uh, you don't have to think only about dissipation you can have some drive or you know things like that okay so now uh, this is just expectation value of a okay um, and 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 this is some uh, you will get some uh, um, differential equation for expectation value of a and for above and any such calculations you need to use cyclic properties and bosonic commutation relations okay so similarly you can calculate expectation value of n okay you can calculate what is a dagger t a of t okay as a function of time you can literally calculate this as a function of time and this is how it behaves as a function of time so all these things i discussed yesterday okay so notice that this is how it behaves as a function of time and you see very clearly that um in a time scale of gamma okay it actually goes to n bar okay where n bar is uh, where n bar was already given before so n bar is 1 over e to the beta omega c minus 1 okay so in limit t goes to infinity it goes to n bar okay uh so similarly you can calculate many things with this lindblad master equation i can ask uh, you know any sorts of questions like i can ask what is what is n square average okay so basically i can calculate a dagger a square average okay so uh, so so you can calculate such things so it's a very powerful tool to calculate various uh, quantities uh, both time dynamics and steady state okay so here i'll make one note uh, but i will not uh, go into details 
you might wonder whether we can calculate things like this a dagger t a of a dagger t1 a of t2 okay so you might wonder if we can calculate things like this um this is more tricky uh, there is something called quantum regression theorem uh, uh, so we have to uh, take the lindblad master equation use uh, quantum regression theorem and then use that machinery to compute things like this but i don't have time to go go into that so this is just a comment uh, that i wanted to make so you can you can calculate unequal time correlations but but uh, but uh, directly speaking it's it's much easier to just calculate equal time uh, uh, functions okay so uh, so okay so last time there was a question so uh, i think somebody had asked question about uh, quantum langevin equation and i said that that is going to be the subject of this lecture so i'll talk about quantum langevin equation exactly for that model that i discussed yesterday okay is the exact hamiltonian quantum harmonic oscillator coupled to a bath same details okay so please look at the hamiltonian uh, and the bath okay uh i want to just make one comment there was also one question yesterday uh, but we ran out of time i think the question was uh, uh you know it was uh, the question was what if the hs and hs are commute to zero okay let us imagine a situation where hs some system hamiltonian and the system reservoir part commute with each other what happens uh so this is actually uh, very interesting i mean even if it commutes to zero um even though hs and hs are commutes to zero uh you can still have interesting uh, physics and in the next lecture i'm going to discuss some of this so so those are the two questions i remember that were sort of pending but uh, if there are any other questions uh, just let me know and um, and uh, if not we will uh, uh, we will go to this uh, quantum langevin equation uh, method manas this probably you have already answered this but i'm not sure this off diagonal element uh, elements they go to zero as t goes to infinity is it uh, yes yes the off okay. elements uh, yeah go to zero um okay so uh, since uh, um, yeah, yeah so actually uh, since sanjeev but uh, is it sanjeev who asked the question yeah uh, hello yeah yeah yes yeah so it actually is. um yeah actually the thing is in fact these off diagonal elements of the density matrix and all can be um in fact numerically computed uh, nicely and uh, and uh, we we are, we are actually we have actually put put a code in the uh, um uh, we have actually uploaded a code in the website um uh, but um, but that code can be adapted to actually compute off diagonal elements but i'll come to that point uh, i'll come to that point later yeah yeah but yes yes the off diagonal elements uh, will go to will go to zero here okay so uh so so now uh, uh, uh now um, uh, we'll go to the quantum langevin uh, method um so uh, so basically so so till now we discussed a lot about density matrices okay uh, so now let us not deal with uh, density matrix uh, for some time and let us just write full equations of motion for system and reservoir so we are not going to talk about density matrices here we'll just uh, talk about uh, just operators okay uh, so uh, so if you if you go to our uh, uh, hamiltonian um, quantum harmonic oscillator coupled to bunch of quantum harmonic oscillators plus hsr um, you can write equations of motion okay for the uh, for the system and uh, and uh, the 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 reservoir so this is basically just doing this okay just doing this okay so, so so just take any operator and just do i h when i say h here i mean h total o and just write formal equations of motion okay so uh, so um, so this is uh, this is a nice method i just want to mention that this is a nice method which is which is very good uh, for steady states uh, and uh, which is non perturbative in system bath coupling and uh, uh, there are some nice uh, details here in these references uh, by abhishek and uh, and uh, co-authors and uh, and also this uh, this method is widely used uh, to understand things like uh, uh, heat transport um, or uh, or electronic transport in quantum dot systems and things like that so 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 so, so this is uh, this is something which is which is uh, which is good to know and uh, and and importantly for us uh, 
it is good to calculate something explicitly out of quantum Langevin equation and then try to uh, see uh, how uh, how it compares with uh, with the results from Lindbergh master equation and so on. Okay. So I hope this is clear. So you just write this equation of motion. Um, so I might be going a little fast, but I uh, I hope it's going to be clear. So so uh, so here I just formally integrate it out. Okay, I formally integrate R. Okay, this is just operator still. This is operator. I formally integrate R. Okay, so so this is a very easy step, but please work it out. Okay, so this is uh, this is formal integration, and then what we do is we take this R and we plug it back into the first equation. Okay, so we write so the procedure we write equation of motion for system, equation of motion for reservoir. Okay, formally integrate out the reservoir. So formally integrate out out the reservoir, and then plug it back into the system equation. Okay, and by doing so, you'll get equation four. Okay, uh, where where uh, I have done nothing. I have just uh, sort of uh, rearranged terms. So there is uh, no approximation here. Okay, so I'll just call this eta. I'll just define eta by this piece. Okay, and I will denote uh, xi representing this piece here. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, so please take a look at equation four. So in equation four, in some sense, we have an equation uh, for a. Remember, a is our uh, a is our system operator, system operator of interest. Okay, and and uh, and R was the reservoirs. Okay, so equation four is the quantum Langevin equation. If we are only interested in steady state, okay. So so okay. First of all, I want to uh, stop here and say that you see this basically is uh, looks like a Langevin equation, right? So it's a quantum Langevin equation. Uh, there's a term which is which is basically noise from the reservoir, and then there is a term which is basically uh, giving dissipative mechanism. Okay, so so this is this this part here, which I'm uh, which I'm showing here. This is like the unitary part, and this a is subject to noise, and this a is also subject to dissipation. Okay, okay, so it is uh, so it is uh, uh, it is it is uh, uh, a Langevin equation. Okay, so now now uh, here is one crucial step. So suppose we are interested in steady state okay let us say we are interested in steady state so uh, if we are interested in steady state then this piece t naught you can take it to infinity you can take t naught to infinity so minus infinity sorry so you take t naught all the way in the past and you make t naught uh, you make t naught go to minus infinity okay so this is a bit crucial because uh, once this t naught becomes minus infinity, you can use uh, uh, Fourier transform definitions. Okay, so this is just one thing to keep in mind that once you make t naught to minus infinity, then you can go to Fourier space and do some explicit calculations. Okay, uh, please uh, stop me if you uh, think I'm going a bit fast or if you have any questions. Okay, so uh, so so that's all. So basically, we take t naught to minus infinity. And then we analyze this equation four further. Okay, so uh, so what we do is we basically define some Fourier transform. So I have explicitly divide, defined it uh, here. Okay, so here remember tilde is actually the Fourier transform. Okay, so till now uh, our tilde was uh, interaction picture and so on. So don't uh, get confused. So this tilde represents a Fourier transform. Okay. Okay, so then uh, it's a very simple exercise. You take this and write it in Fourier space. Okay, you take this uh, this thing, substitute uh, substitute uh, these uh, Fourier transform uh, definitions, and and just write the whole equation in Fourier space. Okay, so this f is just some notation. This f uh, this f here uh, for us represents a or eta or sigma. So it could be a or eta. Or it could be sigma. Okay. 
okay so uh, so okay so this is this is uh, this is uh, so once you do it once you go to fourier space then you can actually write uh, explicitly what is a tilde of omega okay a tilde of omega is just is just given by this okay okay so now now that's good because uh, because now you see uh, finally i am interested in some uh, physical observables right so immediately immediately i'm in, uh, immediately i want to think of what is a dagger t a of t okay this is the occupation number of bosons okay so this is something that they can measure uh, they can measure in experiments uh, uh, using some photon counter and things like that they can measure a photon occupation okay so this is this is basically something that we want to calculate okay so now that that is easy uh, because i just uh, substitute uh, so basically this is nothing but this okay um and i know that this piece is nothing but this piece here uh, sorry this piece is nothing but this piece here okay i'm just using these definitions okay <clears throat> so everything is uh, everything is written in words here so when you read it uh, it will all be clear but i hope uh, that uh, i may, i'm outlining the steps uh, uh, for you okay so so we have equation 9 okay we have equation 9 so remember this is the steady state okay so so here is where uh, in quantum langevin you right away uh, it's you know you, you are calculating steady states because of this step here uh, that you take t not to minus infinity and so basically uh, you are essentially just restricted to steady states if you want like some explicit uh, solutions okay so i have equation 9 um so now what is left in equation 9 right so in equation 9 what is left is uh, i need to calculate eta eta correlation and i need to calculate uh, this thing here okay okay so so uh, so but that is actually simple okay because what is eta okay let's go back to eta so this is eta here yeah uh, yeah was there any question yeah, yeah just just a uh, question like i mean you said this uh, st steady state langevin equation so you had this minus infinity right so yes. you don't have a zero there but a minus infinity so so this is a typical i mean uh, there's a particular case when you assume the observation time scale or the experimental time scale is larger than the system's typical time scale right then only you can have this minus infinity correct uh yeah you basically assume that i mean you are basically saying that uh, the system is coupled to the bath at minus infinity right absolutely yeah right, right, right. yeah 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 okay so i mean of course uh, the point is uh, okay i'll come to this later i mean the uh, okay so 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 okay so yeah that's true so so uh, uh, so now you see so now so now we have to evaluate this eta eta correlators okay and uh, this sigma here but that is easy because i have given eta here okay i have given eta here so you do the same business from eta so let me just outline it here okay from eta you get eta tilde omega okay and then you again do eta tilde omega dagger eta tilde whatever you want right whatever piece you want here okay so and same with same with this you have this and you need sigma of omega okay so you need the fourier transform okay okay so i hope it is clear okay uh, so maybe okay strictly speaking this should be sigma tilde i guess it should be sigma tilde right right okay so uh so now uh now 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 let us uh, go back and check where is the bath uh, and things coming coming uh, uh, coming here so so it is actually coming uh, when you actually evaluate this okay uh, when you evaluate this you can show that you can show that this is eta eta correlator okay um and and eta eta correlator is nothing but uh, is nothing but alpha where alpha is actually pi times j of omega okay if you remember my previous lecture alpha is, yeah is is it w, the delta of w minus w prime or w plus w prime this one right uh, no i think it is w minus w prime 
So this is not like an uncorrelated in time, is it? Eta t eta t prime is not delta t minus t prime. No, no, eta t no. minus no, 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 no. Okay. It's not. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So in fact, in fact, uh, eta t is here. Yeah. So it is some expression. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so okay. So this alpha is pi j of omega. Okay. I've defined alpha here, by the way. But remember that. Uh, let's remember that j of omega is nothing but g of omega kappa of omega square. Okay, it is the same g and kappa. Okay, so just uh, remember from my previous lecture, g of omega was the density of states of the reservoir, kappa of omega was system bath coupling. Okay, okay, so that's very good. So now you basically have everything, right? You basically have um, uh, you basically have uh, uh, this correl this this explicitly. And you also have this piece explicitly. This piece is given like this. Okay. So these are explicit calculations, and you have alpha and and delta here. Okay. Okay. So uh, so uh, please try to work it out. I think everything that is needed uh, to to work this out is given here. All you have to do is uh, uh, all you have to do is go to Fourier transform and you know do some uh, simple manipulations. Okay. Um, okay, so there was there's a question in chat box. Why is there a square in kappa? Yeah, yeah. So there is this this square, right? You're talking about this square. No, it 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 is there in kappa. It is there. It it comes out. Um, I'll tell you one way to see it. Uh, because uh, there's a square because there is a square in 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 this sigma. Okay, there's a kappa j square here, and essentially this is where that is why the kappa comes with a square. Okay, so notice. Okay, this is an important question. Okay, so so notice that sigma has a kappa square. Okay, eta has only one kappa, but what enters uh, the numerator is eta eta. Okay, so that is uh, so basically you have kappa square. <clears throat> okay, so okay, so, so honest, I, sorry, no, sorry, the, just one. Com I also had some doubt about this Sanjeev's question. So not, I mean. Uh, so usually in the time domain, it would be a, it won't be a delta function, but it will be difference of t minus t prime, and then in the Fourier space, it should be omega plus omega prime. But I think here somehow you have a dagger, and that somehow makes seems to make a difference. That's right. That's right. Actually, yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, because of the dagger, I think you uh, I'll check this calculation once more. But I I think you 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 have omega minus omega prime. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll anyway check this calculation, but but yeah, it is it is uh, it is coming because of this. Uh, uh, it's it's stemming from this, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and that is uh, that is uh, okay, okay, yeah. So anyway, I will check this, but I think it is uh, it is correct. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now uh, now we have equation ten. Uh, um okay so now let us just understand the physical meaning of these things okay so 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 what are, what, what happened finally right so finally what happened is is uh, if i substitute if i substitute this quantity if i substitute this quantity and substitute this quantity okay uh, into into equation 9 i will finally get equation 12 okay i finally get equation 12 okay um Okay, so I finally get equation twelve. Even before that, okay. So this is this is this is okay. So 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 the answer is going to be equation twelve. Okay, so basically uh, uh, we have this eta 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 correlation. Okay, and then we have this sigma. This sigma has a piece which is alpha, and then this is i times delta, where delta is given like this. So if you want, you can think of this i times delta as renormalizing this frequency. Okay. Okay, so uh, so but 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 basically uh, basically that is what is happening in the in this uh, in this answer. So here is your final answer for the steady state. This is the this is the photon occupation in the steady state using quantum Langevin equation. Okay, um, so notice that you have something you have an integral over d omega which is left. So typically in this quantum Langevin equations. Although we say that we can get exact solutions, usually what happens is that uh, one integral is remaining to do or something like that. Okay, uh, so so you have this uh, integral uh, d omega here. 
okay so uh, so okay so now now the question is uh, uh, let us just focus on on what is hidden in what part okay so this is uh, okay so this is the bose function okay but at omega at omega okay at omega this basically has kappa square okay i hope everyone uh, everyone remembers this okay this delta also has kappa square okay this has kappa square okay uh, which basically means that the frequency shift uh, is you can just neglect it i mean or uh, it's it, it 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 basically gets corrected by kappa square and this again uh, this alpha also has kappa square okay okay so so now see equation 12 is exact from qle and it it is valid for any system path coupling okay it's valid for any system path coupling the system path coupling information is encoded in alpha omega and delta omega okay so so uh, just look at equation 12 and just let me know if anyone has question about what is the content of equation 12 so even if you did not completely understand the derivation is is it clear what is at least in equation 12 right what are the things in equation 12 <clears throat> okay so so now now notice that this is the answer from qle so there is a superscript here qle okay but we know we know from previous lecture we know from previous lecture that this quantity from q and e okay from quantum master equation was just n bar of omega c okay it is just n bar of omega c so we know this answer so this n bar of omega c was essentially e to the beta omega c minus 1 okay so what is going on right so uh, so 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 but this we know is this we know is weak system path weak system path coupling okay weak system path coupling okay so uh, so then what happens is that actually if you carefully analyze this okay in the limit of weak system path coupling it's very interesting if you carefully take the limit of weak system path coupling to zero this is very subtle issue but but uh, but if you take it carefully uh, limit weak system bar to zero what happens is that effectively this piece here okay starts becoming like a delta function okay and it just picks up the value of n omega at omega cavity okay so uh, so let me let me draw it here so this has two pieces this integrand integrand has two pieces so there is one piece like this then there is this piece okay so this first piece okay in the limit of weak system path coupling actually starts getting limit goes to limiting case of a delta function okay and it picks up the value of n bar omega at omega c okay and so that is that is how quantum langevin equation goes to quantum master equation okay so so this is this is this is how so this uh, uh, this is what i wrote here so this uh, basically it ap appearance of a delta function and uh, uh, which picks up n bar omega c okay so manas quick so, can you just remind uh, this uh, system bus but coupling is encoded where in that equation which term? system bus coupling is encoded in alpha alpha okay delta and delta also but delta okay let's let's sort of you know because your omega minus omega t okay it's also in delta and this is alpha so basically very okay. very nicely speaking this is like epsilon by omega omega minus omega c square plus epsilon square okay. al alpha going to alpha going to zero limit is it alpha going to zero limit exactly ah, okay. Okay. okay so so and then and, and, and this pi nicely makes it uh, literally a delta function yeah yeah, yeah. okay so but it is slightly more subtle but uh, maybe we will not uh, get into that but it is still slightly more subtle than that but but yes but basically that is how it is uh, limiting to a delta function and it's very nice because uh, because uh, uh, from qle you can calculate okay i'll come to that yeah so any questions about this yeah, so so is it only the weak uh, coupling approximation incorporated or the uh marco approximation as well okay okay so so this is this is uh, this is what i was uh, when i when i said it is slightly subtle 
um very strictly speaking you know uh, okay it's, it's it's okay let me let me try to explain it's not only weak coupling but you also want n bar itself to be fairly smooth okay so that you can so that you can uh, uh, it can act like a function that can pick up the delta function and for that uh, you need some finite temperature okay so in some sense uh, uh, you need some finite temperature information which means that there is some markovianity subtly hidden in it okay so that is what i was trying to trying to say okay because you see this n bar omega if you take temperature strictly going to zero this n bar omega itself becomes very very sharp right okay so so there is some subtlety uh, when you have to deal with these two integrands integrands separately parts of integrand so so I, so the markovianity is hidden in a very subtle way there okay and and so one more point so uh, like i yeah i, I kind of agree that uh, this this has to be a smooth function and uh, for that we yesterday so give the correlation function for bath is play like basically h bar by kbt and so it's that so my 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 question is if i if i take some more like this was ohmic bar and that's why the only time scale was you know this uh, thermal time scale but if i take a more general bar like uh, drude bar or something then the, the the this ohmic limit or, or something where only you know the temperature like this thermal time scale matters i have some other limits like you know that a cut off going to infinity is also the the additional so like i i think uh, like the marco lim marco quote unquote marco condition uh, will show itself manifestly if we take some other bath i guess matlab uh, if i take you know some drude bath or something then i think we can uh um, explicitly see the marco condition coming into the uh picture. no i i think i think i think uh, uh, i think the nature of the bath here so let me just rewrite this okay little bit so i think i think the nature of the bath itself is not very important here because let me write this integral in a slightly more uh, uh you know so alpha omega right so alpha omega remember was is nothing but uh, pi times j of omega okay okay so pi times j of omega and this is omega minus omega cavity whole square i just forget this delta for some time plus alpha omega which is a pi square j of omega square okay so let us forget this pi squares also okay all i am trying to say is uh, and then you have this n bar of omega okay all i am all i am trying to say is in the limit that j itself is small okay in the limit that j itself is small okay this piece here basically starts becoming a delta function okay and hence it will pick this value at omega cavity okay so you don't really need to go too much into the exact form of j okay i need j to be reasonably smooth uh, sorry i need j to be small which which it happens in the limit of weak system bath coupling j is going to be small and at the same time i want this thing uh, this n bar of omega not to not to be too uh, uh, to be fairly smooth which is which happens at some finite temperature okay right. so so i wouldn't to worry too much about whether bath is ohmic super ohmic sub ohmic i mean this j is you know you can just think of it like limit j itself is in some sense going to zero because because um, because system bath coupling is zero going to zero. so so earlier j was like in one of the example you are saying j goes like c times omega right so exactly. you are saying c, c goes to zero limit basically exactly 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 yeah. exactly okay so so you can explicitly take a form of j but even that i think is not very it's not very sensitive to that also thanks okay so 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 see so it nicely works out but this uh, this limit is uh, uh okay so okay so i thought i uh, okay fine so uh, so that is that is that but uh, now you see the question is um, uh, um, this is very useful uh, method because uh, with this method you can actually uh, uh, you can actually compute things like this okay you can just actually directly compute things like uh, like this okay so this is uh, so so you uh, so literally i have written down the answer here okay this is what you can compute okay uh, and of course when i say compute you are left with one more one integral to do but that's already a, a big progress right so this is this is basically some unequal time correlation right so it is a dagger t a of t plus tau in the limit t going to infinity okay so these are multi point correlation functions and quantum lagrangian equation is very useful for this multi point correlation functions okay 
now let me just write here uh, to say what i am actually calculating here so it turns out that so this is from qle okay so it turns out that if we do it from qme okay uh if we do it from qme now what does it mean to do it from qme right from qme calculating this unequal time correlations is already hard so you have to use some quantum regression theorem and so on and so forth but i won't go into that but let's say you do weak system bath coupling of this you actually get this answer so let me just write down the answer okay you you will just get this answer uh, just to show the use of these uh, quantities okay so this is the answer this is the answer for this quantity from Q qme okay <clears throat> okay so so this quantity so why is why, why are we interested in this quantity so this quantity the fourier transform of this so let's call it some s of omega the fourier transform of this is something called spectrum okay uh, so you, they call it spectrum and these are these are these are accessible by experiments and you see the fourier transform of this is what it will basically give you a lorentzian okay with width with width gamma okay centered at omega not okay so so it, it it gives a width gamma okay so basically what what happens so basically you do an experiment and you get some width in some measured quantity and from that width you actually will know what is uh, my effective dissipation rate due to bath okay so 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 in in some sense you can use these techniques to finally uh, finally ask what is the value of this what is the value of this uh, and 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 basically so these are the measurable quantities that uh, that uh, uh, that you can uh, you can access and then you can you can benchmark your cavity you can you can you can say okay this is how good my cavity is this is how bad my cavity is and so on and so forth okay because because question is i think the question came up yesterday also like oh, how to get the idea of this decay and and in experiments you can calculate some spectrum and that spectrum usually has some width and from width you read out the decay and use that value of the decay let's say they decay, they say that the decay is couple of megahertz then you use that value of decay back into your uh, lindblad master equation and calculate something else okay and make predictions okay so so that is the that that is the general uh, thing so you calculate you measure a few things and sort of quickly uh, you know uh, try to give some estimates for what these um, what these numbers are so basically what these numbers are actually from experiments okay okay so is it uh, is this is this clear so 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 similarly you can calculate uh, multi point correlation functions and all with quantum langevin equation and it is quite uh, easy with quantum langevin equation because uh, uh, i guess by now you know because it all boils down to just for each of these pieces you are associated with a a, a tilde of omega so you just keep adding them uh, multiplying them and you just compute uh, uh, finally bring it into the form of some integral integral okay so here z of omega has to go to zero linearly always right with omega as omega goes to zero uh, right is there any physical reason for that z of omega z of omega doesn't need to go to zero uh, no uh, i think it needs to go to zero no i think because of this yesterday's i think one of the result uh, Uh, oh, oh no 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 so okay okay so that let me come see, back because, because because you had this j of omega times this uh, bose function right uh, yes, yes. omega goes to zero that diverges that's right that's right so yeah. so typically j of omega you know you, you can go as say let let me just write something like omega power alpha e to the minus omega by cut off okay and when alpha is uh, equal to 1 we call it omic okay alpha can also be less than 1 Uh, this is sub omic and alpha greater than 1 could be super omic so you don't need to as long as you have reasonable cutoffs or reasonable other parts of the integrand which make you converge it doesn't need to uh, go to uh, zero as omega uh, omega goes to zero it can even go to a constant i think even that should be fine but then this yesterday's lecture no you had this uh... Thing maybe hmm. we can discuss later, but you have ah. this uh, j of omega by exponential of h plus right. omega by k b t minus one, right, right? And then you have this e to the power i omega t, right? Right, right. 
Right. So if you integrate over t, that gives you a delta function in omega. And unless g of omega goes linearly with omega, that guy diverges, no? Um, okay. So okay. So let me uh, let me. Uh, uh okay so let let's let's see so you have e, you have d omega e to the i omega some tau right yeah yeah and, and then you have zero, standard zero. e to the beta omega minus one and right? then j of omega right times j of omega j of omega so uh, now if you integrate over tau this equation yeah, over omega over omega no no suppose you call it something that uh, quantity okay this is a function of tau right this is a function of tau yeah yeah, so now if you just integrate over tau, this f of tau d tau mm -hmm. zero to infinity, so that gives you a delta function, right? Because this e to the i omega tau, and then if you integrate, that gives you delta omega, right? That will give you delta omega, yes, yes. Yeah. That will give you some delta omega. Yeah, j uh, of omega. J of omega. Divided by this one. E to the beta omega minus one, right, right. So now, basically, that's the gives the result that omega going to zero unless uh, uh, but why are you why do you want to integrate this over tau at this no because i thought this is the quantity you had what was this quantity f of tau actually no um, no this quantity was still inside the uh, this quantity was still inside some other things right so yeah but i think this needs to be finite no this quantity so uh so this quantity was inside uh, inside this quantity here, here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, yeah. So now basically this correlation function. So if you integrate so, over one, so let's call it f of tau, right? Yeah, let's call it f of tau. Yeah, but so then if uh, right. so if you integrate f of tau over uh, tau, yeah, there is also this thing here, e to the i minus i. That, minus. That's fine, but the, the, you were saying that this quantity. Uh, integral of this quantity doesn't have to be finite is it no 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 it has to be i mean yeah no it has to be so suppose i so after doing marco approximation right suppose I yeah, 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 yeah 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 no no it has to be finite i'm just uh, uh, i'm just seeing in what cases it will or it will not be finite okay so we can come back to this i mean uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 you're absolutely yeah. right so once i once i pull this out of the integrand then mm -hmm. this piece in combination with this piece actually mm -hmm. it's written here right so so, yeah, yeah, somewhere there. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I had written that. Uh, no, no, you're absolutely right. This piece, okay? This piece here. This piece, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this piece, uh, and I think you can even take this to infinity, this t also to infinity, okay? <laughs> this thing should be finite. Yes. Yes, so then, uh, doesn't it say that this j of omega should go to... And this also should be finite. Yeah, yeah. this also should be finite. Zero linearly with omega? Um... No, you see, I think, uh, okay, so this is, see, because if you first integrate over tau, okay, it will pick up, uh, it will pick up delta of omega minus omega c. Okay, so uh, you had this another omega, uh, okay, yeah. so it's not a j, okay. Yeah, it's not zero, so you have omega c, so indeed you are right, so it will actually pick up j at omega equal to omega c. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay? Yeah, yeah, that's very important point, actually, maybe, maybe I should have, I thought I stressed on that, but, but, uh, but it's written here. You see, yeah, finally, okay. we calculate everything at omega c. Ah, okay. We, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so it has to be well defined at omega equal to omega c. That is correct. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah, so that's uh, sorry, that's an uh, important uh, yes. uh, point. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so, uh, so that is the. Uh, uh, that is uh, that is the thing. So so uh, so notice that the, the big advantages in QLE where you can compute this uh, uh, multi-point correlation, correlation functions. Okay. So now uh, so but okay. So now let me. Um, uh, I, I don't want to uh, make a uh, very approximate sketch, but you know you can imagine that if I have QLE and uh, and imagine that uh, this is system path coupling. Let's call it epsilon. Okay. System bath coupling. Okay. And let us say that as a function of epsilon, okay, um, let us just calculate something like A dagger A. Okay. Let's say as a, as a function of epsilon, let us say uh, QLE uh, for some reason uh, looks like this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Now the quantum master equation, 
okay would look something like this it will it will agree for small epsilon and then it may start deviating away okay i will try to show you plots which are actually actual calculations but the idea is that beyond certain epsilon okay uh, the quantum lanzan equation will start uh, deviating from the uh, quantum master equation okay and this is all this is all steady state okay <clears throat> and and this is very important because because the point is that uh, as a function of system path coupling it is not quite obvious all the time what is going to happen okay so 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 it's good to have a, a good theory for large system for all range of system path coupling but advantages of quantum master equation is that you can do time dynamics you can extend it to uh, interacting systems and so on and so forth but but i just hope that it, the the idea was uh, the idea was clear that um, nowhere in today's derivation we use the fact that alpha which was which was uh, which was proportional to kappa square we never use the fact that kappa is small okay so we never use the fact that kappa is small the only time i used for kappa is small is when i wanted to make some connection with quantum master equation but otherwise we don't uh, uh, we, this was called kappa right this was called kappa okay so okay so now let me uh, let me just uh, since since we have been speaking only uh, only about single harmonic oscillator coupled to one bath let me just give an idea of uh, how uh, uh, useful quantum langevin equation could be in a slightly more uh, uh, complicated setup um uh, which will answer many questions okay so um so first of all uh, the setup i'm going to discuss here i have a question Yes. Yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we were doing quantum master equation, we had written <coughs> rho, the dynamics of rho, and you said that there is also a drive term that is there. So by uh, connecting it to bath, there is also a drive term that was written in terms of Lenblad operator. So here, when we did uh, everything in terms of quantum Langevin equation, we the dissipation terms they are manifest in terms of the results we have gotten. So how the drive that is manifest in the results oh the drive is literally here so you should think of drive as 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 uh, see this is this is this is this, this you should think of as drive okay this you think of as drive and eta eta correlation actually comes here okay and this is where temperature enters okay this is where temperature enters okay Okay, so this is very important. So it's you have to, if you calculate this explicitly, you see this is the first time where n bar is entering n bar of omega. Okay, so so this is why the reservoir acts like a thermal drive to the uh, quantum harmonic oscillator. Okay. Uh, so Manas, uh, yeah. Two questions. So in equation seven. Yeah. Um, no, not seven. Uh, can you go up a little bit? Yeah, four, four. Hmm. So here also one can do uh, this uh, non-Markovian and uh, weak coupling approximations in sigma, is it? Is it? Ah, uh, so, yes. I think you should be able to. Uh, you should be able to uh, uh, do it. Uh, um, yeah, you should be able to do it. But here it's a bit. Uh, yeah question is when when does this uh, uh yeah yeah one could do it at this stage but you know i would rather just calculate it completely and then take the limit carefully in the end uh but it's a good question if you do it here can so you what i'm asking hmm. what i'm asking i mean of course this is a non limiting non local in time equation but suppose if we can get in using some approximation of local in time equations then is it possible from this equations to get a quantum master equation as analogous to uh, uh, classical langevin equation to fogarty clark equation okay so so okay so that so uh, i think i think uh, it, it is not uh, so I, actually i don't know if if uh, if one could uh, yeah, yeah one that would be really i don't think it is that easy to connect these two actually you uh, what uh, what you want to do is you want quantum langevin equation you want to do some approximation and then you want to from from there you want to 
introduce density operators and yes. then you want to derive quantum master equation right yes and i want to write an uh, evolution equation for the density operators yeah so yeah i i'm not sure i think it's not easy to do this uh, uh, yeah i am not yeah i don't think uh, yeah yeah can i insert something here actually yeah yeah uh, so uh, there are these people uh, carmichael and uh, peter drummond and uh, gardiner they have developed stochastic calculus for this operator uh, differential equations uh, where they treat like noise as an operator fluctuating quantity and uh, they they indeed uh, sort of uh, uh, have done some formalism of that sort where they could uh, sort of recover this uh, uh, master equation in some sense um yeah but but I, i even for this even for just this oscillator coupled to a bath i'm i think i think we have actually uh, thought about it uh, for some time actually so so just uh, just if i just take this anupam and um, yeah it's it's i think uh, i'm not sure if uh, yes, uh, if i can precisely get the lindblad master equation uh, that would be good to see actually yeah yeah it looks like it's a natural question if you I mean, yeah, you have this Langevin type description and other thing. You have master equation type description. So yeah, we have a, a, a procedure to go. Like there is a Kramer's model expansions, or there are many methods. Whether similar methods exist for quantum case also, uh, which uh, yeah. yeah, I think one yeah. problem is uh, like even if you take uh, like some limit where the sigma becomes a delta function, which you can do. but the noise is uh, is always uh, correlated right in the quantum case so you never get a delta correlated i mean uh, in time delta correlated noise yeah, yeah. this uh, people actually make the approximation that theta is also delta correlated in uh, yeah so time that actually. is It's kind not, of a classical uh, limit i mean so strictly speaking you can't get delta correlated noise yeah but then you will not yeah. get, if you do that delta correlation approximation then you won't get the original equation you won't right. get yeah. yeah i think it's uh, difficult uh, no you get it uh, that is needed for getting the non markovian master equation uh, only issue is you need to maintain that these operators are non commuting the noise is a non commuting object uh, my question uh, is whether you get this uh, 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 quantum master equation in the lindblad form or not that's a, a second question but i'm saying oh, is there a procedure to go from this nagawa description to a uh, uh, you know, uh, Evolution equation for the density matrix. Has there been any attempts? Yeah, it, it's been done. It's been done by Gardiner and others. Yes, yes. I see. Okay, so um, Manas, just one quick comment since you are yeah. here, and um, because there was a question on fluctuation dissipation theorem. So actually, this eta eta noise is is actually right. The it's the precise uh, quantum fluctuation dissipation. Right. 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 so so here i want to make one comment uh, regarding yesterday's question about fluctuation dissipation theorem from the lindblad master equation i think uh, um, i think um, it's still not entirely clear because maybe one has to explicitly evaluate these things and uh, and then check it uh, but 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 i'll try to just uh, find a clear answer to that but from the lindblad master equation it is still not entirely clear uh, about uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem i just wanted to make that comment um uh, so uh, so but, but yeah yeah so that's uh, okay but but if you want to think about it it this mm. is uh, this gamma uh, sorry c c a v coefficient gamma coefficients right mm. from linda dobard which actually introduce jumps from uh, state a to state b in the right in the system so those should satisfy little balance in some sense right if i think Would it be like that? No, no. The detail balance condition. You see, uh, detail balance condition. Uh, this satisfies that we that that is shown here. Detail balance condition is satisfied. Yeah. Okay. So 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 okay. Uh, so if you use this and calculate and calculate uh, uh, P N. Okay, and and then uh, and then you you check that the solution that we our steady state solution satisfies detailed balance. Okay, I think I think to check uh, I think if you actually want to check fluctuation dissipation theorem by calculating some uh, autocorrelation functions, we should explicitly calculate that and check 
if we satisfy fluctuation dissipation theorem okay. right anupam so so and to calculate those correlation functions using lindbergh master equation you have to use my my guess is one way to do it is you have to use quantum regression theorem because you want to calculate operator expectation values at two different times right mm. and that procedure itself so so yeah i think it will be good to explicitly calculate something like that and then uh, then make some statements yeah yeah okay okay so okay so now let me uh, come to this um okay so now let me uh, let me uh, uh, so so this model uh, I, i just wanted to show this model because first of all we have been talking only about oc occupation numbers a dagger a so first of all let us talk about something else uh, something like current through uh, through the system okay uh, and secondly this is a model where this j of omega that i have been talking about uh, and i have been saying that it is c omega and so on here we can actually explicitly compute the j of omega so that is another advantage uh, one more advantage is that this model um, uh, has <clears throat> um, uh, has two reservoirs okay it has two reservoirs so you can keep them at different temperatures or chemical potentials and then study some current through this uh, from one reservoir to another okay so let me and then uh, and then in this model we can actually use quantum langevin equation to get some exact results and find some non trivial observations uh, find some observations okay and then try to compare it with uh, quantum master equation and see where you can go when you can go wrong okay so the model itself is quite simple uh, this red thing here is a system okay so the system is a dagger a a1 dagger a1 plus a2 dagger a2 plus g times a1 dagger a2 plus a2 dagger a1 okay and uh, and uh, the bath here is basically semi infinite tight binding models okay there is a tight binding model here and a tight binding model here okay so the path is explicitly given by this okay so this is uh, the l is the path index so l goes for 1 comma 2 okay each path is a tight binding model and the system path coupling hsb i used to call this hsr right this is nothing but a1 dagger b1 so a1 dagger b1 superscript 1 so it is this link okay and then a2 dagger b1 which is this link okay and uh, and just for convenience i have put an explicit epsilon outside with system path coupling so that we epsilon will basically some dimensionless parameter that will give you an idea of the strength of the system path coupling okay so is this is the model clear so this semi infinite tight binding model can be kept at some temperature and chemical potential this can be kept at some other temperature chemical potential and you can study current okay the current through this bond so this 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 system itself has this system itself has two uh, sub parts and between bond 1 and 2 you can study the current or you could study the current between this 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 current or you can study this current of course in steady state all this current should be same okay so so i hope the model is clear so it is a much more complicated version of our previous model but but nonetheless it is uh, uh, it is easy uh, to do it uh, with quantum langevin equation okay uh, manas just quick question before going uh, yeah so with this previous model can you do the same calculation which one you mean uh, uh, the inf infinite harmonic oscillator on the left and infinite harmonic oscillator on the right with different temperatures You, you sorry you mean infinite infinite harmonic oscillator I mean, like, no the same model you had uh, in that uh, last example right right, right. but uh, on the one side you connect with one temperature on the other side you connect with other temperature sure so sure can you you can also do the calculation there is it or yeah yeah so what you want to know is whether you can have a single harmonic oscillator which is coupled to one bath on the left and yeah, another no, but, bath on the right no but uh, bath of not this kind but the earlier kind Earlier, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. And then, then, then you can, uh, then you can calculate uh, again. You can calculate heat current and so on. Yeah, yeah, okay. The uh, only thing is here, I just added two sides because there were there's some subtleties with G also. Uh, no, so yeah, uh, but yeah. the bath model is also slightly different. No, here bath model is slightly different. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But 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 uh, uh, but okay, you you'll see that it becomes clear in uh, okay, right, right, right. Okay, okay, so. Okay, so you see that uh, so this is explicit. So okay, uh, uh, the way to solve it is actually the following. Um, first step, uh, just go to eigenmodes of the bath. 
Okay, I think this will uh, maybe even uh, elaborate a little more about Sanjeev's question. Uh, so first, you take this bath, say left bath or right bath, and go to bath modes. Go, go to eigen modes of the bath. So the eigen modes of the bath. Uh, in eigen modes of the bath, you you will get this Hamiltonian. Okay, so this is H uh, H bath one. Okay, H bath one in eigen mode in eigen modes. Okay. Um, where you can calculate this explicitly because it is just tight binding model. Uh, so, uh, so basically, uh, by doing that, what happens is that effectively it will go back to uh, Sanjeev the previous. Uh, it, it can, in principle, go back to the previous model. Okay, yeah. uh, because uh, because then the single mode is coupled to all the eigen modes of the bath. Okay, by some way. Yeah. Okay? yeah. So, so that is the thing. So, so in fact, uh, if you really want, we can. If you consider, say, one one infinite tight binding model and one system, okay, and uh, you can recast this problem uh, back to the original problem or back to the previous problem with some specific j of omega, okay. Okay. So so now now uh, now we do the same business, okay. So once you have this, you basically you basically uh, write the same equation here. Okay, uh, and 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 here uh, here you have equation for the bath. Uh, so now this is bath L equal to uh, bath of left bath and right tight bending uh, right bath. And for A also you have A one and A two. Okay, uh, so you have bunch of equations here. Okay, so so um, so now now the point is now you can compute the current okay you can compute the uh, so the the story is the same uh, you have to calculate some noise noise correlation you and then two temperatures and two chemical potentials will be involved involved in this this thing here okay so so the story is the same but then you can compute this quantity this is the current through the bond between 1 and 2 okay this is the current that i was trying to show this is the current between them Okay, so uh, which is basically equal to current between this, current between this. Okay, so you can calculate the current and you can calculate the occupation number. Okay, so uh, so these are the exact expressions. Okay, these are the exact expressions. Um, and I have written, uh, I've given all the details here, but uh, let us see what are the important points here, right? So important points here are that uh, the occupation number. This is the occupation number on the first side. Okay, this is the occupation number of the first side. So notice that this already gets this problem already gets very complicated because now the occupation number on the first side is you cannot simply say it is n bar of omega naught, right? Uh, you cannot say that, right? Because now it's much more complicated. It is coupled to this bath, it is coupled to this site, which is also coupled to another bath. Okay, so so this is literally this is literally the answer. This is basically occupation occupation of site one. Okay, occupation of site one, and uh, and and uh, but again, okay. So so um, so it's the same thing, right? So this denominator, remember this denominator we saw before, which was much simpler, but now it is just this here, and this kappa, okay, and and not kappa, sorry. There's a k here. It is a new new uh, parameter that I have introduced. This k is is given here, okay. Um, and interestingly, uh, this bath spectral function, this j, okay, this j actually you can compute explicitly for this, okay. So this j is you can comp compute explicitly, and this actually again goes back to Sanjeev's point, one of Sanjeev's question. If you calculate explicitly, actually this is the expression for j here. So you see, at omega going to zero, it is well defined, okay. So so it's defined at omega going to zero. So this is j j l of omega. Uh, JL of omega. So, uh, so this is very simple to calculate. Actually, you just have to convert this into an integral, and you know this. You explicitly know this, right? This is like after diagonalizing a tight binding model, what you will get, okay? And and you also know this, so you can easily do this summation, or you can easily do this integration integral, and it will be like square root one minus omega square. Okay, so 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 now you know some interesting quantities all in the steady state exactly. Right, uh, no approximations. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so at this stage, uh, strictly speaking, uh, you really cannot uh, um, uh, cannot say what is the 
you know you you cannot you know uh, you you cannot really write this as n bar of omega um, omega not comma you know you 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 really cannot uh, always write it like this you know you you in some limits in some in there are some limits where you could you could uh, uh, write it like this where the effective temperature is some linear combination of the temperature of the left bath and the right bath and so on but by and large it doesn't necessarily take this form okay but uh, but this is what the answer is so this is heat current and one can use this method to calculate actual uh, actual system where you have source drain bias uh, in a quantum dot uh, and you say you have a quantum dot coupled in coupled in series and you have some source drain, drain bias and you actually want to calculate the dc electric uh, dc current okay so so you can you can you can compute uh, these kind of things <coughs> okay and uh, and quantum dot occupation you can calculate so whatever i said you know it can hold equally for bosons also except for some minor changes okay uh, where bose function can be replaced by fermi function and so on but by and large uh, it can hold if both the if the entire thing is uh, fermionic okay uh, manas yes yes Uh, can you extend this to like uh, computing quantities like exponential of lambda times the current expectation value of that? Uh, Is so, like a equivalent of some generating function? Yeah, some for full counting statistics and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you should be. Uh, yeah, you should be able to compute some generating function for this model also. yeah i mean as long as it is steady state uh, uh, steady states i think you should be able to yeah yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. i think mm-hmm. it has been done using this kildish yeah ah okay uh, langeva i don't know it might be possible but it's bit difficult mm-hmm. i think yeah <clears throat> yeah can i can i mention something in this, in this context uh, if you do full counting statistics typically you are Hamiltonians are going to be different on like forward and backward branches. I mean, on the Kett side and on Bra side, so it's difficult to even obtain uh, closed Langevin equations. Uh, so the first step itself is slightly difficult. Yeah, but yeah, I think. Uh, I think but the Kellys, uh, yeah, uh, people have been doing it. Yeah. But but certainly, I think one by one moments you can calculate. I think right. so maybe not the full fcs but uh, you can keep on calculating higher and higher moments mm-hmm. yeah yes. it will be very more and more complicated right it will become more no no actually it, it is it is not uh, mo- it may not be more and more complicated because you know in the end what will uh, in the end uh, okay this i this i have to think through but uh-huh. in the end uh, we will end up getting many of these uh, noise noise uh-huh. things right? no okay. what i mean is basically can you just compute let's say n general expression for n of them and then uh, oh no that is i think yeah, i think uh, yeah no, maybe uh, maybe it is possible i don't know that i mean yeah, yeah. it is possible because noise is uh, uh, gaussian noise uh, although it's a quantum noise uh, it has wick theorem so one can compute these things in principle even uh, uh, finite frequency correlators n point correlators one can compute so okay so i have to think this through but but basically what i'm saying is that because of this relation here uh because because of yeah this, yeah 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 could be yeah so yeah yeah but yeah, but yeah. a lot of lot of integrals will go away will go away yeah, yeah exactly exactly so but uh, but okay so that's uh, okay so now uh, now uh, note that uh, okay note that for current and okay so note that for current and bosonic occupation number this equation 19 this equation 19 which is this whole thing is exact for any system bath coupling okay so in, in other words if we had done a von marko approximation which is the redfield equation or the quantum master equation then equation 16 for equation 16 the results would start deviating for large epsilon so one can do one can one can take this okay one can take this and basically do a, a repeat uh, the exercise of Uh, deriving a quantum master equation for this hamiltonian okay uh, 
so if you do that uh, you will get some quantum master equation and from there you can calculate so what happens is the following okay so this uh, this is something uh, uh, this is a representative plot but uh, but um, but i hope i will put some uh, actual plot very soon but what happens is for some parameter values so this is interesting for some parameter values um, i don't remember the parameter values uh, at the moment what happens is that suppose i calculate uh, steady state current right so this is important so suppose i calculate steady state current so i calculate um, uh, the steady state current is minus i imaginary part of a1 dagger a2 okay um suppose i calculate this uh, what quantum langevin equation gives me is that the current increases okay the current increases and then it starts decreasing okay uh, for some system bath coupling so if i keep on increasing my system bath coupling my current increases for a while and then beyond a point system bath coupling actually uh, turns out to be detrimental it actually you know uh, reduces the current so so quantum langevin equation gives something like this okay so now the question is what do you get from quantum master equation right so it turns out that for a while uh, they both agree which they have to because it is weak system bath coupling so so this is uh, so this is uh, this 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 is somewhere around uh, probably around order 1 but this is something which i will uh, uh, hopefully have some actual plots but then what happens is that beyond a point they will deviate okay and uh, it's they deviate pretty strongly okay they deviate pretty strongly and it's not even clear what the quantum master equation will give okay it may it may give completely wrong results okay so uh, so uh, there is a non monotonicity which uh, which is definitely captured by quantum langevin equation but it may be captured by uh, red field equation also uh, but in the end uh, finally they deviate okay finally they deviate so uh, so uh, so uh, so this is the this is the this is the story okay and uh, and here you you may get completely unphysical currents and so on if you keep on increasing epsilon okay so uh, from quantum master equation okay so this is uh, this is uh, this is important and and and, and many often times what happens is that uh, in some parameter regime it can happen that quantum master equation might uh, start predicting something um uh, something which is even qualitatively very different you know so it may happen that quantum master equation may just predict something like this okay for some quantity but quantum langevin equation may predict something like this so even things like non monotonic behavior i'm not talking just about quantitative physics even qualitatively you may start getting uh, uh, very different results um and uh, and uh, and uh, strictly speaking uh, you have to make sure that you use some non perturbative uh, 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 methods to calculate things at large epsilon at large epsilon and this is actually quite a reality in uh, in uh, in quantum dot experiments uh, where uh where um mm, where one can create this source bias and drain bias and then you have some quantum dots like this okay this whole thing is a fermionic problem and what they can do is the following uh between the left quantum dot so let me call this quantum dot 1 and quantum dot 2 so they have something like tunneling barriers okay they have some effective barrier like this okay okay so if you increase so they can control these barriers okay which means that they can actually control the system bath coupling okay uh, and and so and and uh, and and so on and so forth so they in principle have this uh, additional barriers uh, as knobs and they can control these things and and they could in principle study limit of strong system bath coupling and weak system bath coupling and intermediate system bath coupling and so on okay so 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 this is uh, this is at least in in context of quantum dot systems uh, this is uh, tunable and and so on and so forth okay yeah so uh, so next uh, so are there any questions uh, okay so in the chat window i see some questions uh, okay so first question is weak system bath coupling is kappa j going to zero does that give j omega zero 
Ah, so I think I address this question. I think I think uh, it may seem that in the way we have shown it, it may seem the J omega is going to zero. But you see, what is happening is that a Lorentzian is turning out to become a Dirac delta function, but it is still inside the integrand in, in, integral. But the integrand is well defined, and so it picks up the value at omega naught. Okay, so that is uh, so this I already answered, and then. How does the relaxation to steady state compare uh, using QLE and QME? Okay, so this is uh, so 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 the thing is um, in QLE it is very hard, almost I would say impossible to study time dynamics. Okay, so I have a table at the end of my talk uh, comparing all these different methods, but um, but it's very hard to do time dynamics, so it's very hard to uh, uh, compare uh, relaxation times. But for at least a large class of uh, models, you can do something called direct numerics, and you can probably use that to compare uh, between direct numerics and QME as far as transient relaxation uh, to the steady state is concerned, which is actually what I'm going to speak here. Okay, uh, Manas. Yeah, yeah. So as long as you have a quadratic Hamiltonian for the bath, basically you can always write down the exact uh, quantum quantum Lanzby equation, right? That's right. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Okay. So it's so so in principle you always have an exact equation, and uh, it doesn't matter what uh, what is the Hamiltonian for the system, I guess, right? Ah, but no. Then the, see the problem is okay. So the problem there is okay. Let me actually uh, do it here. Okay, this is a good example actually. So here you see uh, I have this equation where one system operator is coupled to the another operator in the system. Okay, but similarly, a two will actually be coupled to a one because it's a quadratic problem. It just closes. Okay, but if it is a interacting problem, then uh, you might not get closed equations. Okay, uh, so a one, uh, so you may not get closed equations, and on top of this, you might have to do some uh, semi-classical approximation. Uh, no, what I'm saying is, you may not get a closed equation for the system, but you still have a. Uh, I mean, uh, first order equations, and where bath you can basically uh, put it as an integral of something, right? As long that's as right, the bath, right. yeah. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. in, in other words, a uh, quantum Langevin equation is useful when you want to treat the system bath coupling non-perturbatively. Okay, mm -hmm. but you might have to sacrifice uh, something like time dynamics, or you might have to sacrifice in the sense that if it's an interacting problem, you might have to do additional semi-classical approximation on the system bath. Okay, but the system mm -hmm. bath coupling can mm -hmm. be treated non-perturbatively. Yeah. Okay. 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 So now, uh, so now let us go to the third method. Uh, let us call it direct numerics. Okay. So uh, I don't think uh, uh, um, it's it's quite clear what I have written here. So even if it's not clear, uh, uh, so if you read these sentences, it will be quite uh, quite clear. So uh, this actually uh, actually is also related to some question that came up uh, yesterday. Uh, so let's say I forget, let's say I say that I want to do direct numerics. I don't want to do any um, Fourier transforms or do any steady state uh, or do any perturbation theory. So what if I take so I have two right? So I have two degrees of freedom, uh, two fundamental operators in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, system. And let us say I take 512 type tight binding sites, 512 or uh, 512 uh, or 511, let's say whatever uh, uh, tight binding sites. Okay. Um, okay. So okay, let's take it in two powers of this. So 512. Okay. So now, now you see, now this whole system I just can diagonalize, right? So, uh, so and and if the system itself has only two. Uh, fundamental operators and the bath is has 500 um, tight binding sites. It is as good as an infinite reservoir. Okay, so so uh, so I will I will get some steady states. Of course, if I keep on waiting, there will be recurrence. But you know I can postpone the recurrence uh, for extremely long times, right? So uh, for 512, I will just get some steady state for a long time. And then uh, I can do all sorts of comparisons, right? So, so this is what I have just outlined here. Um, uh, that to check the time dynamics, one can do numerical simulations uh, by choosing bath to be finite, large but finite. Okay. 
and uh, and evolve the full hamiltonian using unitary hamiltonian dynamics okay so it's very easy actually so uh, i think uh, i've anyway written the steps here you can make the code yourself so uh, you would collectively denote d as a column vector of all annihilator operators of both the bath and the system so a huge column vector where i have b1 b2 up to b5 112 and then i have a superscript superscript is denoting the left bath then i have a1 a2 this is for the system this is for the system and then i have again b1 b2 up to b512 for the right bath okay so uh, so then uh, then i can write the full hamiltonian like this okay these are very simple things i'm just uh, writing it in a way that uh, you know you can just make a code and play around with it and then uh, if you are interested in some correlation function like this okay d d dagger so d d dagger is what this is um, a matrix okay d d uh, d d dagger is a matrix of all correlation functions okay and that matrix basically evolves like this okay so 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 if i have if i have uh, 512 sites on each so 512 plus 2 plus 512 okay so that will be nothing but 1026 okay so i will be only i only have to exponentiate 1026 times 1026 uh matrix here and then i can get correlation functions for everything for all the uh, for the entire correlation matrix and then i pick up whatever i'm interested in right so uh, let's say i pick up i just want to pick up a1 dagger t a t that will be some element in this uh, uh, matrix and then i can see how that evolves with time okay so so that's all so 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 once you do that then you can basically study the true dynamics and then you can make all these comparisons between various uh, techniques and some of these details are actually in this paper uh, and it might be interesting uh, to see where these different uh, models uh, uh, models uh, uh, approaches fit in and uh, and and this is what i wanted to say as long as uh, uh, as far as uh, a system where harmonic oscillators are coupled to harmonic bars or fermionic systems are coupled to fermionic bars but uh, there could be many generalizations and uh, If, uh, and 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 various geometries and all these uh, techniques should should be able to work okay so uh, this thing i tried to summarize uh, in one table um, uh, so i'm not sure if uh, if this is the best table to best way to summarize the table but let me at least summarize the table right so we have yeah uh, instead of diagonalizing the hamiltonian uh, mm. is it possible to actually evolve by Infinitesimal time like one minus h g t. Uh, this can evolve with that way. Uh, no, 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 Anupam. The the thing is, we are not. We are diagnosing this part h i j. Okay, so this thing is really is still small. Okay, this thing is still small. So why would you? Uh, so so that's why you can easily exponentiate this problem. No, no. But suppose suppose you want to do it for let's say a huge number of particles in the bath. So, is it possible to instead of diagonalizing this yeah. matrix multiplications one minus i h d t, and every d t you just do such multiplications? Um, yeah, I I I think you should be able to do that. But the point is, how huge is huge, right? So, for example, even if I have like ten thousand particles, so 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 let's say if I have ten thousand particles, okay. If I say if I have ten thousand, that will be like ten thousand plus ten thousand. Plus two, right? So that will be twenty thousand, around twenty thousand by twenty thousand matrix, right? That is okay. So, so, so what I'm saying is that um, even if I have ten thousand uh, on each side, each each bath, then it is a problem of twenty thousand by twenty thousand matrix. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um. But 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 what we observed is that you know if you have finite number of uh, degrees of freedom on the site like of order uh, five or ten, you know even something like two thousand forty six, two thousand one thousand twenty four or two thousand forty eight should usually do the job. But yeah, but yeah, in principle, if you really want to avoid exponentials, yeah, in principle, you should be able to do infinitesimal time things. Yeah. Yeah, like like in classical systems, you do there are methods, Euler methods, and 
uh, are capable yeah. of codes. Yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, yeah. I just, if I think that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, basically, what you can do is you can write a differential. You can write an equation for this, right? You can write what is d dot of t, okay? Uh, and d dot of t, and then you you can do uh, some infinitesimal uh, protocol. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But 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 okay. Well, one more thing is, of course, this is a uh, minor point, but uh, just to keep a track of where the temperature is entering, it actually enters in this. Initial correlation matrix, okay, will have this is yeah. obvious, right? Initial correlation matrix will have some things about uh, uh, the reservoir uh, information, which will have temperature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more, one more. So, so basically, if you make a representative plot of this, so I don't have a plot, but let if you make a representative plot, say you have time and you want to calculate a1 dagger a1, okay, and let's say you start from vacuum, okay, then then you will basically get like this. Extreme and maybe after a long time you will get some missing recurrence. Okay, but these are extremely long times. So this this is what we will call steady state. Yeah. Yes. Please. Okay. So I have made this table here, uh, but I mean I I think one should improve this table further. But uh, basically, so the table is made in the following way. I have quantum master equation, quantum Langevin equation, and direct numerics. Okay. And here I have system path coupling, time dynamics, and multi-point correlation functions. Okay, so quantum master equation and system path coupling it's perturbative. Uh, quantum master equation, time dynamics I would say possible. Quantum master equation and multi-point correlation possible, but using quantum regression theorem. Again, with Langevin equation, system path is non-perturbative. Time dynamics is, I would say, almost impossible, and multi-point collisions uh, possible, but in steady state. Uh, and direct numerics, of course, non-perturbative, uh, possible, possible. Okay, so so this is okay. This is this is just to sort of bring together uh, everything into one piece. And uh, in the next lecture, I will be discussing about uh, about actually spin systems. Uh, uh, and multi-level systems, and also the most uh, one of the most important models, which is the James Cummings uh, uh, model. Um, so I just wanted to make an announcement. So, uh, so already, <coughs> already uh, 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 there's a MATLAB code that has been uploaded. Uh, so the, that MATLAB code is uh, made very very user friendly. Actually, it is uh, uh, every step is uh, steps are written very clearly. It is actually written for the James Cummings driven dissipative James Cummings model and all, which I will explain tomorrow. And in tomorrow's tutorial, uh, we will be explaining how to actually uh, deal with uh, uh, open quantum systems uh, by uh, in terms of numerical algorithm implementation using James Cummings uh, driven dissipative James Cummings model as an example, where uh, we will show uh, uh, using MATLAB uh, how to run the code and how to get. Uh, uh, get uh, quantities uh, of interest out, time dynamics, steady states, and so on and so forth. And in fact, um, if you take our code and uh, you know put uh, some things to zero, you will actually get many of these uh, other systems that we have already spoken about. Okay, so so uh, so, but tomorrow uh, after discussing the code uh, uh, in the tutorial, we will uh, we will uh, uh, we will um, basically show uh, uh, things like uh, so you you. you I would suggest you can download the code and just try to run the MATLAB code to see that it actually runs. But uh, you can use that code to actually do something, you know, check very quickly something very simple like this. If I calculate a dagger t a of t starting from vacuum, I know that in the steady state, this is from quantum master equation, okay? That I know from steady state, it has to go to n bar of omega cavity t, right? And um, and uh, you can actually see that the code how it goes and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, so I would uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, you can look at the code and all. And uh, anyway, tomorrow uh, I will uh, explain uh, explain more uh, about all these things. Um, yeah, I think I can stop here. Uh, and maybe uh, uh, if there are any questions. Okay, why is the time dynamic? It's very difficult for QLE. It still comes uh, down to doing integrals over omega, right? 
uh, okay so that is the question so so okay let's see why it is uh, and 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 if um, someone can add uh, um so 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 here so 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 here is why it is uh, difficult right so so okay so this is what we have right this is what we have okay so now let's say that okay let me just erase this uh, minus infinity you know let's see the original okay so we have this right now uh, now in principle uh, this also i can formally integrate out right i mean no one stops me from formally integrating this out right and but then after that i have to use this formal integration to calculate something like a dagger t a of t okay so so the thing is if you formally integrate out you can actually formally integrate out and try to just write formally uh, a dagger t a of t is equal to something without doing any steady state approximations it's it's a it's a highly non local uh, equation in time um, and uh, and uh, it's a very non local equation in time uh, i'm not sure if uh, uh, if uh, abhishek do you happen to know if somebody has calculated time dynamics for some some example uh, if using quantum lagrange equation you are saying like starting from time zero or yeah yeah starting from time zero essentially essentially you start from vacuum and you, or, or some time zero and say with empty cavity and see how it evolves so starting from some time some initial value problem yeah i mean yeah i have not seen but it probably maybe it's, if you do a laplace transform or something is possible but uh, yeah, it looks difficult right 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 it looks yeah but that would be interesting to see if at least is there some extreme like com ha very high computational numerics that one could do even that i'm not uh, sure how I possible i remember some, okay but i'm not completely sure uh, like there some work like, but yeah I, I, i have to check i'll check and say yeah that would be that would be yeah that would be uh, but yeah even if we can uh, right i think i think what would be interesting is let's say that you cannot do the full time dynamics let's say that that's very hard but question is i think it would be interesting to see whether we can at least find approach to steady state you know some properties of how it approaches steady state right yeah, but from but, the exact numerics also of course we know right from exact numerics we know you mean from this uh, uh, that uh, yeah. there we can do this starting absolutely. from time zero Yeah, yeah, yeah. This from this, this we know exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This one, right? You mean this oh, one? Ah, yeah. uh, sorry, ma. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Hi, ma. Yeah, sorry, I my connection went. I missed your uh, argument. Could you just repeat? Uh, uh, we can't so hear you. You can write down. Uh, uh so we so can't now? hear you. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, your voice is. Yes, uh, I can hear you. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tell so me. The, Okay, okay. So you write formal solutions for a t and yeah. a dagger t, and then you uh, uh, take the averages and so on. Yeah, yeah. For the yeah. correlations, but right. instead, can you? Uh, I mean, you can use the form for a omega and then uh, uh, then calculate the inverse transform mm -hmm. kind of things. No, no, no. You see, this is the point. This a omega. you know you can you can write this form of a omega only when you take this t not to minus infinity okay ah, okay uh, see that is the thing and that is the so i am i if i take t not to minus infinity what does that mean that means that uh, it has been started at minus infinity so whatever i get out is just a steady state so this step if i don't do then i cannot do this step also okay and that is where it is uh, it becomes uh, tricky no but say for instance the equation after date which you have uh, there you are calculating this uh, a a dagger t a, a t uh, yes uh, so if you take uh, the times to be different then you get something uh, time dependent on the right hand side yeah no if you can if you take time to be different you can still do that uh, see here i have taken times to be different for example okay Uh, I I'll just call this uh, it's of t plus tau. If you want, just call this t prime or something. Okay. So this is a t a t prime. But uh, here you will also get uh, t prime. Yeah. But that is not uh, that is you see that is uh, that is uh, that is a very that's but but the point is you still take limit of t going to the infinity. Okay. Yeah, that is like a two time correlation in in the steady state. Yes. Yes. That is. Wow. Yeah, so that is two time correlation in the steady state. So that is the thing. So but yeah. Manas, but Manas, I mean, when you do the Fourier transform, 
in the original right. equation. Uh, if you take that uh, thing to t zero to be zero, mm. and its upper limit is t, mm. because uh, it cannot be. I mean, it has been extended uh, to infinity by redefining sigma, I guess, right? Uh, because it's an equation to, uh, at time t. So now, if you do a Laplace transform, you can get an uh, equation, and then again, you can get an equation similar to equation eight, but an extra term which depends on the initial uh, value of a. At a at t equal to zero, so you have an extra term and mm -hmm. a Green's function, and then uh, uh, then you can define a formally uh, a of t by formally uh, defining the inverse Laplace transform, and mm -hmm. then you can try to write down a formal expression in terms of integrals, which are basically uh, in terms of inverse Laplace transforms and the statistical properties of eta tilde s. Eta tilde. Um. Yeah, yeah. I think that already I will be quite happy if you get something like that. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. So yeah, maybe we can try to work it out. Yeah. Uh, basically. So, right, right, right. Hmm. So uh, like I have seen this type of calculation in like so for example like uh, uh, Brown in motion. If you consider and you write equation for x and p. Uh, then, like what Professor Anupam is saying, is like that. Ki, uh, you we write a Laplace transform, and then you know for free Brown in particle, we can easily find the inverse Laplace, and you know we can get everything analytically. So I don't know. It might be more complicated for more complicated like you know some non-trivial problems, but for some simple systems, I think uh, uh, you know transients are even uh, obtainable from Langevin equation approach. I guess. uh right so but uh, okay so uh, the thing is suppose i don't want uh, suppose i want to go beyond steady state so you are saying uh, even if i the question is let me call this uh, m or something so could we your is there a way to basically write it like this i am not sure i mean uh, anupam is this what you have in mind something like this no 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 right at at as inverse laplace transform of as Oh no, that is fine. Okay, okay, right, right. But but finally, if I want solutions for this, yeah, yeah, then you have to do. Yeah, this you have to write inverse Laplace, and it will be quite messy. <laughs> yeah, it will be messy, but you can formally write something in terms of integrals. Formally, yeah, I don't know that. Uh, right. I don't know whether you can perform those integrals, but maybe one can try to do those integrals numerically. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. formally it must be possible, right? It must be possible. You'll have two terms: right. one coming from the initial correlation function of the system, and both right. correlation functions. Right. right. So formally, it must be possible. Formally, you have some expression. You can get some expressions. Whether you can evaluate those expressions analytically is uh, probably definitely will be very very difficult. But probably numerically, one can try to think of some skills to evaluate those expressions. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Even, even, yeah, yeah. For, okay, uh, forget. Never mind analytics. But even if you manage to do the final thing numerically, that's already a good step, right? That means you have time dynamics from quantum Langevin equation. It looks like, yeah. but I'm not sure. I unless I do it uh, myself. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll think about it. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, I yeah. I think first we should, we can think of working it out for the simple problem. This equation one and two. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So. Okay, I think maybe we should uh, stop because the next uh, lecture is in twenty 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 minutes. Amanes, is it a good time to stop? Uh, yeah, I think I think because I'll go to spins and Jane's Cummings model in next class, right. um, and I would just like to say that uh, please try to. Uh, of course, the today's notes also will be put very soon, uh, so notes are appearing in the website uh, quite soon, and uh, and the tutorial tomorrow's tutorial has already appeared. and tomorrow's code is also already appeared so i would suggest to just take a look at uh, those things also and open the code and try to see if the code is running on your laptop and then it will be easy for us to explain it uh, in tomorrow's tutorial and please try to attend tomorrow's tutorial because i think uh, tomorrow's tutorial is probably as important as uh, tomorrow's lecture so so please try to attend the tutorials one yeah. one, one small question manas uh, yes So for uh, if the bath bath uh, Hamiltonian is say not quadratic, then uh, this uh, quantum Langevin thing uh, doesn't uh, work out well, right? And yeah, then it is. So then, then yeah, the, the other way around then is uh, uh, then still uh, this quantum master equation approach is still good. It it um, works out. uh right there also quantum master equation also becomes a little complicated because 
uh, there if the bath itself is interacting okay uh, there you know you remember we have this gamma gamma things to calculate right 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 so calculating that will again become difficult if the bath becomes interacting so so if bath is interacting uh, if bath is interacting everything becomes difficult if the bath system coupling is complicated still you can handle things but we usually want the bath to be non interacting itself no uh, say if the bath is non interacting but not quadratic i mean the right okay no it's okay fine yeah okay thank you yeah yeah <clears throat> okay okay no i'm just i'm just saying if the bath is made of say unharmonic oscillators or something right if the bath itself is made of some unharmonic oscillators or some very you know yes. then it's a complicated story yeah right. yeah thank you yeah. uh also a quick question so uh, like you you talked about this both born approximation mark approximation but in the in the lindblad formalism we also do this uh, secular approximation so uh, is there uh, any like here i don't think we needed a secular approximation so Uh, like is there any uh, you know like where does that go uh, that's right Or, so 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 okay so this is a bit of a long story but let me just say that if you if in our case we did not need that but if you take a more complicated hamiltonian like this like the one i'm showing here uh, this hamiltonian okay there if you want to reduce it further into lindblad form then you need some additional approximations okay okay so here here the quantum master equation is not in the lindblad form Okay, uh, so that's red field form. Yes, it's I mean, in the red right. field form. But in the okay. original simpler problem, the quantum master equation itself also turned out to be the in, in the Lindblad. Ah, right. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Manas. Uh, okay. Bye. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Thanks. See you. See you. Thanks. Thanks.